sugar and spice There's an apple pie in Sammy's Pottage Kitchen Hi, welcome to Sammy's Cottage Kitchen. Once more we're out on the deck and not in the kitchen. But you know, it's barbecue season and everybody needs to have a steak barbecue during the season. There's no other way around it. We're gonna do steak two ways. Got this beautiful big rib steak here because the guys like their steaks. So you know, you gotta make a steak like that. It's very easy marinating. I'm just going to, I'm also gonna be doing tenderloin type steaks because us ladies maybe like it a little leaner at least I do and I put on a little bit of Worcestershire sauce cracked pepper not too much I was good for just putting on a little bit of roasted garlic I just want to get the marinating happening because the steaks need to marinate for a little while not long in fact it's a very a misconstrued conception that you need to marinate meat uh, for a long long time unless it's a, a rough or a tough cut you don't need to do that in fact you're going to ruin the meat when it's a, a tender and very marbled cut like this one is you don't need to do it longer than a half an hour if you do that kind of meat like a tenderloin or one of these cuts longer like two hours longer than two hours it's going to become mushy and it will lose its juices strange but true I will be showing you proper ways of cooking the steak without cutting it that's like bad news don't cut it but a lot of people do that I want to see if it's the right inside you know and it's just a bad thing to do so now I'm just going to flip that over again I'm going to cover it with cellophane I'm going to put it in my little fridge in the back my cooler <laughs> And while I'm just getting ready to trim up the tenderloin meat, I'm going to have my husband and partner in music, Jack Hollenberg, in the back there, and he's going to play some live music because it's something that's so missing these days. I don't know, everybody's got a lot of tech technology in their homes, and so the live music is going out the door, but we're kind of the last of the dying breed, right, Jack? <laughs> we still love to play. We're still recording new albums. We just recorded a new album. We recorded an album earlier with instrumentals on and my vocals. So Jack, what are you gonna play? I'm gonna do a uh, Jerry Douglas tune. It's called The Tablet of Your Heart. I love that one. It's a great one. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Over here. And I'm gonna start trimming the beef. show you this is a complete beef tenderloin look at this but as you've noticed it needs to be cleaned up you can't really use it like this therefore if you don't mind doing the work you can afford it because I took this piece off the end already this was on the end because I'm going to cut that all up and make a beef stroganoff this is not a steak piece so I'll trim it up later, put it in the fridge, and it becomes a wonderful beef stroganoff. I'll make that on another cooking show. Into the fridge. Now, you don't want to waste the meat, and you're gonna want this part for the steaks for sure. So you gotta get under the, see this, this piece here? It's important. Nowadays, you now beef costs a lot. So when you can get a cut of beef that needs to do your own trimming, and you can still have a wonderful beef meal, that's what you do. So there's a sharp knife. It's called a boning knife. You get underneath. You get underneath the whole skin like this, but you don't take a bunch of meat away. Just getting rid of the that tough silver skin. Very important to get that gone. 
Now I'm trimming up the whole meat. And if you have a whole dinner party of a lot of people, that's exactly what you do. You're gonna cut it all into steaks, which I will do too. But today we're only serving four, but you just keep trimming this silver skin off. See, it doesn't take the meat away, it's just waste. It's important for you to watch this part because like I said, I went to the store the other day thinking, oh, I wanna, I wanna show you how to do steaks properly. The price of them was atrocious, and I know that that's on a lot of people's minds. You know, why would you, why would you wanna spend your whole budget just on a couple of steaks when you can have wieners? <laughs> Whoa, that's not even a comparison. So just keep on trimming it away. It peels right off when you get your knife under the right place. And Jack plays guitar nicely, but he also sharpens my knives. What would I do without him? I can sharpen knives too, but he just does a great job of it easily. So I always just hand him the knives, say, can you please make sure this is, see that little piece there? I'm not gonna throw that out. That's gonna go into the stroganoff badge. I just don't want to waste it. Just put it inside. But you see this? It's all silver skin again. So that's got to get cut off. Just dig underneath like that. And here we go. Just get underneath it. Just start with one strip. Awesome, Jack. That was nice. Thank you. You can play anything else you feel like playing because I'm just telling everybody how, or showing everybody how to trim up this large piece of very, very tender and beautiful meat. And I'm gonna get from this side now. Take it like this. You can tell I'm a farm girl. <laughs> how can you tell? Thing is, we raised beef too. We raised everything. I hail from Saskatchewan, but more in the Anaheim, Nakam, Humboldt area. Man, they got the best meat cutters and butchers over there. Sausage makers, St. Gregor, Munster, amazing. I also learned from a very young age how to cook, which I might have told you all in an earlier show, but in case you missed it, my dad was the largest hog farmer in Saskatchewan throughout my whole youth. So I learned how to cook everything pig, for sure. But he also raised cattle, chicken, you know, everything. So we had great organic living right from the get-go. Maybe that's why I still like doing that. It's coming very nicely now. I haven't got much more to trim. But it is a bit of a job. See this piece in here? I don't like that. That's got to come out. I know a lot of you are thinking, ah, I don't want to be bothered with all this. And if you don't, then you just go to the grocery store and you buy a piece that's ready to go. It's as simple as that. Now, I'm just about ready here on this side. I'm going to trim this off the side. This has to come off yet on the back side. Again, you don't want tough, a tough piece when you do up the steak. Now, I'm just gonna grill a couple of these steaks today. I'm gonna marinate them with a real special marinade. And the others I'll put away because I've also got the T-bone. And it's a large, thick steak. We kinda like our steaks to be medium to medium rare. So that's how I'll be showing you. But I'm gonna show you the different what you have to feel for when you're feel, checking the steaks for cooking when the time comes. Yeah, okay, that's looking pretty good. A little piece here yet. Take it off. And I see some here yet that have to come off. Are you enjoying the music? I gotta be careful not to dance too much. I don't wanna be cutting my finger. Anyway, I learned how to cook meats and to know about meats. I was 10 or 12 years old. So even when I'm shopping, I make sure I get good cuts of meat. Now you see I've got this beautiful sharp knife. What's the name of that one, Jack? That was Elmer. 
Bye, little las mariposas. And what does that mean? The dance of the butterflies. I love it. We wrote that when we were in Costa Rica, remember? That's right. So I'm cutting these about an inch thick, like that. Okay. So you get a nice piece of lean, beautiful meat. Put a couple of those in there, like that. Oh, it sounds like the gravel trucks are going by. <laughs> We do live sort of in the country, right on the outskirts of Langenberg. So, you know, it's uh, kind of country. So I'm just going to cut this up because I need to put some of them away, the big pieces here. And before you start playing again, Jack, I'm going to get you to take this meat back into the kitchen because I only need a certain amount to uh, make for today. So if you don't mind doing that, that would be awesome. I'm going to hand you this. And I think you can have that too. Thank you. And maybe wrap that one up and put it yep. in the fridge. Yep. Thanks. Good to have a trusty assistant around. Although we don't get any guitar music when he does that. <coughs> Now, I'm going to do a special marinade on this meat. See, nice thick cuts like that. I've got to clean off my board. I have a, I have a washing station here, but what I'm going to do, because that was raw meat, is I'm going to flip it around to the other side, because I don't want to use the same board for something that I use raw meat for. Again, it's something to be careful with. i got a little trick to show you. I'm going to do kind of an Asian style, a little bit of an Asian not completely Asian style, but a nice marinade for this meat. I said it doesn't need much. You see this, this big ginger root? Well, it's uh, frozen. You say, what? Frozen? Because when you want to put just a little bit of ginger into this, yeah, it'll be too coarse if you do it any other way, but it's frozen. So you can do it like this, and it comes off perfectly. And I'm going to want ginger in there. See? And it won't be coarse. It'll just be nice flavors. <coughs> Special marinade. And then I'll have to put that back in the fridge. Now that I chased my good man out with one thing, I gotta chase him again. Oh, and by the way, can you take this out and come back with that? And, and he'll say, yes, dear. <laughs> A little bit of soy sauce. Because we're gonna be cooking this pretty soon. So that's why I can marinate it now. A little bit of the garlic powder. You can also use fresh squeezed garlic on this if you want. Um, be a little bit on the lazy side. No. Just sometimes the garlic burns and this doesn't. And I would rather do that. I'm going to put a touch of the avocado oil on there again. I often talk about avocado oil because when you're cooking, it, it doesn't turn into trans fat. And the reason I put that on here is it's a good fat, first of all. And second, it won't stick to the grill because you don't want that. So I just do a little of that. So a little soy sauce, a little ginger, and a little bit of garlic. Gonna have a touch of pepper, no salt, because even there is already some in the soy, although I use low sodium uh, soy. Again, I try not to cook too much with salt, because first of all, it's not really good for you. There are people who are intolerant of too much salt. I'm gonna just roll this around in here. Just make sure it's nicely coated and that the flavors are infusing. It just makes a quick and very nice steak, a tenderloin steak like that. The one with the rib in it is going to take a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to cover that up, put it in the refrigerator. And after a little while, I'm going to put some sesame oil on there and garnish it with a little bit of toasted sesame seeds. So I like to place the cellophane right over it because it, it'll infuse it a little bit better and a little bit quicker. So the steak is happening. I don't have to do anything else because it's just going to do its own thing. Now what I want to prepare with this sizzle platter, I mean <laughs> with this meat, duh, I'm, I'm talking ahead of myself, is a sizzle platter. I've got, I've got a nice cast pan like this right and and the presentation is nice because there's a board that goes under it so when you take it off of 
the hot grill, you just set it down like that and it keeps sizzling, right? Even when you're serving it. So that's, that's a pretty awesome thing. So I've got to cut some veggies in order to do that. Hey, I sent my husband away and now I lost the music. So now I've got to move over here because I've got a simple things to cut up. A little bit of mushrooms, which need to be dusted off. Now washing mushrooms, there's a controversy about all that, of course. I prefer not to wash them, especially when I'm grilling, but I use a clean cloth or a brush to just brush them off like that. I like that. Whew, it's a warm afternoon. It's really summertime here today. And I'm going to do up some mushrooms, and I'm going to do up an onion, and some peppers. And that's what's going to sizzle. But I won't, you know, when I put the steaks on, at the very same time I'll put the sizzle, sizzle platter on, because you don't want, um, you don't want them to be overcooked or too overdone or anything like that, so you want it all kind of done together. So how many of you are out there thinking, you know what, a barbecue, what a great idea. I'm thinking about maybe the cool drink with the barbecue too. I like a nice glass of white wine. That's my druther. I know my husband prefers a beer, for sure. Now that you came back, I have to chase you away again. I need to have some sesame oil that's in the cupboard. Uh, what else does it? And an onion that's on the cupboard. Please and thank you. It's so weird. When I'm in my kitchen, of course, I just... So I'm pretty happy to have Jack as a runner here. I'm going to also do some pan-fried potatoes to go with this meal because it's just one of those. So I'm just going to cut up the mushrooms in quarters this time. I don't even want to... I'm not even showing off my fancy knife skills. Darn. <laughs> but I am going to quarter them because that's the right size. You, you don't want the mushrooms to disappear. Yeah. Had many, many, many barbecues. I think I told you about the one I did <coughs> with my brother when my dad brought us in a little pig. And, and we said, well, what are we supposed to do with that? And he said, I don't know, cook it. So we didn't have any fancy spits or anything like that. So between the two of us, we rigged up something that we could crank. Leave it to my brother. To this day, his name's Kurt. He is, um, he's got a place in Dory Lake. It's a resort. And uh, he's been building everything. And he's just a, a hunter, fisher, an amazing kind of guy. I love him dearly, but just watching him go is, heck, I'm, I'm going at snail's pace, I'll tell you. Everybody thinks I'm moving fast. So now I'm going to quarter these out because I need to just, you know, I got, did you notice the color? I've got amazing colors going on here because that's what you want, festive. It's happy. Like I said, we don't have a long, a long uh, summer season. So what we have, we want to take advantage of for sure. I also like using these kind of knives with this. You can get those knives anywhere. They're called a turning knife. Awesome. Kind of a curve to them. And it works really well on, on all of these kind of cuts like that. You know, you got to get kind of around the seeds like that. So you, you want to make sure you have. So on this barbecue that I'm doing compared to some of the others I did, I'm actually less monkey business and a little bit more cooking. Thank Where you. Oil, I think yeah. it's up, up in the cupboard by the oils. I think. I think. I don't think so. No? Might be in the fridge then. I might have hidden it. Who can tell? Who knows, as he would say. Now I'm chasing around on wild goose chases. That's even terrible, isn't it? So just get these peppers cut up because they've got to get ready for the sizzle platter. And then I've got to slice up potatoes as well. And I might sing a song in between, but I want to make sure things are prepared first. I told a story earlier about having a a steak barbecue when we were in Cali, Colombia, and the meat was, well, really tough, not because they didn't know how to cook it, but because the poor cattle are so lean. They're just, I remember going to, we were going to a restaurant in, that was in uh, Costa Rica as well. <laughs> and Jack said, I think I'm gonna order beef because I've only been eating chicken and fish. And I said, 
I looked at the cows and I said, well, it's my experience when I see the cow looking like that that I think I'm sticking to fish. But he ordered beef in a way and was mighty sorry. So now what I'm going to do is I got to slice these up a, a little bit thinner. You know, like if you ever had um, fajitas, because that's the kind of cut that I'm going to be doing. That's how I'm going to be cooking them on the sizzle platter. So that you have like that. And while I am cooking and dicing, my poor man is in there trying to find me the lost, my lost sesame oil. If I don't find it, it's okay because it's just as good without it. Ah, you did find it. It was a mystery tour. Can you play us another song? I'm just, just bossing them around. It's just what? You say yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> no, because this is kind of a part where I'm just dicing and slicing and and doing uh, not much otherwise. But it's important that people see how to use the the knife. I think it's very important. So, like that. I moved it to the side. I don't know why I did that. I needed to be over here. And what song are you doing? I don't know yet. Not yet. I'll think of something. Okay. I trust you will. I like it because it's just a good atmosphere for me too when I'm cooking. I, I always like having music on when I'm when I'm cooking and dicing and slicing. I don't know. Like I said, a world without music would just be too strange for me. Let's do a blue Spanish ice. Ah. I was just talking about Costa Rica and stuff, so. Makes me want to dance. Kind of dangerous with the knife. one of my mother's favorite songs. This one and La Golondrina. In fact, I think he put La Golondrina together for my mom. My mother and father used to love to dance. So did Jack's mom and dad. I guess we never get to dance too much because we're always on the stage making the music, so what do you do? Yeah, does that look nice? Nice and colorful. to turn on the barbecue for a preheat. And back here for cutting.
beautiful. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Made me want to dance, but I had knives in my hand, so it wasn't so smart. All right, I've got the um, preheat going on on the barbecue. I've got my veggies chopped and ready. I've got to put my ginger back. And I'm going to dig out this steak because I wanted to put a little of the sesame oil on because I think it's an important flavor. I have this little island here that Jack built, of course. And it, <laughs> and it has a lot of the spices, and it's an awesome little island. It has everything I need. It's got the drawers with tools. It's got the drawers with spices. And you think you've got everything, and still, you have to go running around to get a few things. But never mind. Okay, so that's that little bit of oil is on there, which is going to keep, again, keep it from sticking to the grill, but also give some wonderful toasted flavor. Back to the chiller. Back to the chiller. Now I'm going to just wipe off my little board and I'm going to flip it around. I like these kind of cutting boards because you can kind of flip them around to both sides like that so you're not worrying about um, using uh, the wrong thing on them. So I'm going to just use a measuring cup. The trick is I'm going to slice up some potatoes and these are really nice gourmet potatoes. So they make a nice slice and I'm when you're when you're frying them in the pan you don't, you don't want to pile them deep I just want to put them all around the bottom so they get nice and browned it's important but these are kind of small and they'll make a pretty pretty uh, kind of a potato chip almost without it being a, a deep fried thing and again I'll be using the healthy oil the avocado oil so it becomes a, a healthy kind of a potato Put a few herbs and a little bit of garlic with it and hmm, a nicely thin slice but look at the different colors like the the red one has got more of a gold color to the middle of it and the then there's these purple ones they got a bit of a purple inside like that so you get a real well i tell you the mosquitoes are definitely uh, enjoying the heat i think and to my blood <laughs> trying to keep them away. So I'm just getting this all pre-ready and I'm going to ask Jack to play one more song because as I'm preparing all this, it's kind of nice to have the music in the background. And then I'm going to sing a song because I'll have everything pre-prepared and ready to go. It doesn't take long to cook at all. Look at that, it's really funky. We've got the purple on the inside of these potatoes and it's, it's not bad, it's not burned or something. You know, like a lot of times they say, well, it's got a sun, sun damage, but that's not the situation. And I'll be putting them in the pan pretty soon and putting them on low, because if I don't do that, they'll turn brown. And, well, they're going to turn brown anyway, because I'm, because I'm cooking them. <laughs> what am I saying? But it's a different kind of brown. <laughs> Is this uh, Bonita Margarita? Yeah, I gotta tell a story on that one. My sister and I were out at their lake and uh, kayaking, and the sun was dancing on the water and, and everything, and if you listen to the tune, and you think about that, her and I were out there paddling in the nice sunshine, and the sun and dancing in the water, and Jack is sitting on the deck, and he just started <laughs> creating this song. And I could see it. And the name of the lake was Margarita. Yeah. I'm just going to make about two cups of these potatoes. Then I'm going to prepare the pan.
later this week or beginning of next week, we're all going to head out, both, both Jack and I, and we're going to go to Lake Margarita and we're going to do some kayaking. Makes me think about that. I'm going to get the heat on this burner. And the barbecue is nicely coming to heat, getting ready for the steak. Put a little bit of oil in the pan. And again, this oil. That's an avocado oil. I'm going to let it heat up before I put the potatoes in there. I'm going to start getting the sizzle platter ready. It also needs to have oil in it. That's how you season it so it doesn't stick. So I'm going to get it going in the barbecue. Ooh, it's getting a nice heat. Losing my bridges. That could be a blooper. in the pan because I don't want them to get brown. I'm going to put a little bit of pepper on there. Thank you, Jack. I'm going to come over there and join you. Can I come over there and join you? I've got some things happening here and I think I've got time to sing a one tune. I need a little bit of salt on these. You need always a little salt on potatoes. Again, make sure it's a healthy salt. It's just smart. Okay, I think everything is pre-ready. Everything's preheating. Just going to make sure these aren't on too high. I've got a brand new CD I've been telling everybody about, and it's called um, Life's Kaleidoscope. And just for fun, and we're kind of having fun because it's a barbecue. We're we always say this is our CBC song or something. Where that's a bad thing to say on Access. <laughs> it's our Access song, too. We always say uh, it's a fun song. It's about people changing partners. And, you know, we ran into that a lot when we were playing in other places in the world. Can't say where either. And it was called Changing Shoes. So I'm just going to go over there and join Jack. Apron and all. Because, after all, I am the singing kook. <laughs> I said it, right? I didn't change my shoes and my feet are still not sore, so I guess we're good. Changing shoes, changing shoes, why does everybody keep changing shoes? Change your mind, change direction, left me standing alone in the kitchen, you said you
you don't know what to do. I like this part. Your dirty shoes are at my door. What did you bring those back here for? I found comfort in an old you so Shoes, changing shoes. Why does everybody keep changing shoes? New shoes, new shoes. You got a case of new shoes, blues. I'm changing shoes, changing shoes. Mine are good. Why does everybody keep changing shoes? Well, we didn't change shoes, you and me, so that's why we're still here doing what we're doing. But I did buy these shoes, and, 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 and they've been around the block a few times. I'm going to go back and start cooking. I'm going to show people how to make those steaks. Okay. I'll take that. And you can plan out to. Please and thank you. I'm running out of tunes. I know. We're almost there. So as you hear, I've got potatoes sizzling away here. i got potatoes sizzling. Oh yeah, here's my scoopers. And I've got this pan in here started. See, it's going like crazy too. And that's awesome, because that's what I wanted. I need it to be hot. A little bit more oil on that one. This needs to be sizzling. And I'm gonna take a little of that oil from there. I'm gonna first make sure that this is clean for the steak, right? Because it sticks at the best of times any kind of meats. So you make sure that you clean things up. And then I take this, just gonna clean it up a little bit, because I had barbecue sauce on it. Take a little bit of the oil from the pan here, and just do that. Just sort of seasons the, the grill. Simple as that. I'm gonna get the steaks out. First, this steak. It's the big one, the rib steak. It'll take a little longer to cook than the others. Flip it over like that. Make sure it's nicely marinated. Just throw it on there, woo! I like that, I just throw it on there. That's a good feeling of just getting it gonna have to just get Jack to clean this up for me later. And then I'm gonna remove that pan that's down on the bottom to the top because it's sizzling hot and that's what I want. Right? I'm not putting the vegetables on it just yet. I need to clean this side. crosshatch on that in a little in a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna take, give the potatoes a little flip. See, they're starting to turn brown. Nothing like new potatoes, just hand fried. When you're cooking the steak, it's good to have it done a little ahead of time before serving because you're gonna want it to rest before you cut into it. So that's why I've got that on there already. Now, the sizzle pan is hot. So I'm gonna put the onions on first. Awesome. A few of the peppers. It's hot. Just wanna get a start on it before I put the others on there. Nice and festive. I'm gonna add some flavors, spices and herbs and things at the end. Now, a lot of people are probably thinking, once you've got that barbecue full blast, but that's what you need when you're doing steak because you wanna lock in the juices. If you start too low of a burner like that, it's gonna allow the juices to fall out. I'm gonna cross hatch this. 
You just get underneath it like that. Have a look, yeah. So what you do now, you take it out and you give it a turn like that. Now it's cross hatching. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get the other steak. Now that that one's happening. And these are the smaller. Thanks, Jack. I'm gonna send you in the house before you play another tune. I'm going to need um, a couple of clean cookie sheets like this, or you can take these in and clean them up and bring them back to me. Okay, I'm gonna put those on there. There's oil on this, remember, so it doesn't stick. Because there's hardly any fats in a tenderloin, you kind of have to give it your own fats. So if you'll take these two pans in and clean them up and bring them out, I can put the cooked meat into them, please. Thank you, dear. Nice to have barbecues together with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I made a homemade barbecue sauce. And I had it left over from another barbecue that I just did. But I'm going to tell you what I made. I had tomato sauce and some ketchup. And I put a little bit of um, a smoky, this liquid hickory smoke in there, because it gives it a beautiful flavor. Uh, some Worcestershire and some garlic. And a little bit of oil. And that makes a beautiful barbecue sauce. And you're going to want to give your steaks a little bit of a barbecue sauce. Okay, let me give these a little bit of a toss. See, after the steaks are ready, I'm gonna put this back down on the burner. Potatoes are doing wonderfully. The sizzle platter is on its way. Woohoo! That looks awesome. And do these a, a little bit of a mighty flip. And you see how nice and brown the potatoes are getting now already? But they're not getting soggy. Like they'll all be nicely browned. And nicely colorful. So that's the trick to that. Now I'm going to want to close the lid for a little bit because I want to hold the heat in there. So I'm moving this over. And I'm going to be flipping the meat. And then I'm going to show you a trick to how you know what your what your meat is, whether it's medium or whether it's well or whatever it is, without cutting into it or having to poke it or do anything like that. These are going to be the pans for putting things in. Um, I'm going to open it up now because this one's ready for turning. And then I'll show you. Look at that. Isn't that looking lovely? That's a cross hatch that I was talking about. I keep hiking up my pants. I'm going to have to get some. I need a cowboy hat and suspenders. Well, the good thing is I'm not eating too much of my own food, I guess, and I'm not getting like too big. So now what you do, I'm going to be cross hatching this again, but I'm going to put a little bit of barbecue sauce on this side because you want it to savor in there. Just a little bit. You can also wait, because now I'm going to have a, a messy finger from doing that. But I'm just going to set this to the side for a minute. And I've got to keep an eye on these, because I want to cross hatch those too. Yeah. So turn them. All it is is a, a turn, like, you know, like that. And that's where you get your nice marks on it. I'm going to close this up again. Just clear my path over here and put my barbecue sauce back to the side because that's where I'm going to need it. I got the sizzle platter there too. And I'm going to need these for putting the meat in to hold before serving. And move a few things to the side. Keeping potholders handy is always a smart idea. I wonder how many times I chase potholders around the room. I just, I just do. It's, it's dreadful. Okay, are you getting hungry for steak? Because it's going to be a mighty fine steak. Now let me show you something. This is an important thing to watch. When you want to see what the steak, whether it's, it's, whether it's rare, medium rare, whatever, you take your hand like this, it's important. Take your hand and you hold, you push your thumb to your little finger like this. And then, and then you push here on your hand. 
And that's going to be rare. Now I'm going to push here. It's rare. At that moment, I'm going to cross hatch because it needs to be a little more cooked, right? You're not going to turn it over again because that just doesn't do a good job. Okay, so now that's rare. Now you put your thumb to this finger and you touch it here. Again, you touch it here. And you just push a little bit on that finger. Now you're getting to medium rare. Then you touch here. Now you got medium. Medium to medium well. And when you push here, you got a hard kind of feel here. That's how you know that it's well done. So well done, medium well to medium, medium rare, and yeah, rare. So let's do that again. That is rare. That is medium rare. That is medium well, and that is well. That's the way it goes. When you're doing it upside down or inside out, that's how you know. Okay, well, look at the potatoes. They're looking awesome. It's a sizzling happening around here, isn't it? Now I'm ready to turn the tenderloin steaks because I also don't want them too well done, right? Look at the, look at the cross hatch on them. They're beautiful. The flavor on these is going to be beautiful, too, because of the marinade. I also have to make a turn on these. And the last thing I do is I'm going to be taking, well, I'm decorating the steak. Now, we'll give that one to the birds. I'll wait to turn this until I bring it down. I'm going to now baste these. Like I said, I'm going to want these done so that they have a chance to rest. I'm going to cross hatch these on the other side yet. And just a small base of the homemade dressing is what I like to have. Okay, this one is ready. This one, to me, is a medium rare. And it is. So I'm going to take it off, and it's going to hold. It's going to hold beautifully. And now I'm going to take the sizzle platter and put it back down. Go and have a good look at that. I tell you, it's a warm day and I'm starting to sweat. I'm hoping there's a nice cold cider or something at the end of this. Are you having a beer or a cider, dear? Uh, I'm having a cider, dear. <laughs> I like it to be nice and cold if you don't mind. Yeah. I'm just going to close this lid. Is it? Good. All right. So here we're just about ready for a nice steak with fried potatoes and a sizzle platter with mushrooms, onions, and peppers to be served for consumption. I'm going to have one of the small steaks. I don't know which one you want to have. I'll have a small one. I think we'll feed the guys too. What do you think? They deserve They're it. They're hard workers. They, they stand on their feet work. taking pictures all day. Thanks to Cole and Jeff for uh, doing yes. all this. It's pretty awesome. And Access for coming out and having fun with us on our barbecue parties and, and our Sammy's Cottage Kitchen parties. Okay, now I'm going to show you these. Did I cross hatch the other side? No, not yet. Just going to do that quickly. I don't want these cooked anymore because they're a tender meat. So again, let's do that thing. I'm going to touch the meat. And yes, it's definitely medium rare. And that's the way we like it. Now, if you like it more cooked, all you do is cook it a little bit longer. It's quite a simple um, solution. So what I'm going to do now is take that meat. Oh, I got the wrong flipper. Take it out of there, put it here, because we don't want to cut into it until it's, it's ready. So I'm going to let it rest. But I should show you what it looks like. Awesome. Oh, making me hungry. Making me hungry. Now I'm going to close this because I want that sizzle, pl sizzle platter to come to full heat. And I'm going to turn the potatoes down because they're doing very well. 
And like all true barbecues, you gotta have one foil pan with stuff, right? Okay, so we don't want it to get cold, but it's not. I'm just going to hold it like this for oh, about five minutes. How you doing? Oh, you got a bottle opener and everything. I'm starting to, I'm starting to know that I'm by the barbecue. So Jack is getting uh, the table prepared over there, and I think that's really awesome, with a, a nice cold beer and a cider, and I'm just getting ready to serve this up. We're going to cut into one of those to show you what it looks like on the inside, right smartly. These are awesome. I'm just going to turn those down. They're ready to go. Can you see the, the potatoes, how they look? Just a simple rustic kind of a meal. I'm going to add a little bit of parsley to that because I just think they look nice with a little bit of green in them. Like that. There. Look at that. Just rustic. That's for good breath, they say, if you're having garlic. So now I'm going to go just and uh, check my sizzle platter. Oh, look at that. It's sizzling like a crazy thing. Look at that. And then when you bring it out to serve it, it's still sizzling because you put it on the, on the plate like that, on this. This is wonderful. Move that over here. Put the plates over here. And the only thing I've brought that I'm planning for dessert is fruit because it's a barbecue. So you got all the meat, the enzymes of the vegetables are wonderful to go with the fruit. Are you ready to honker down to a meal pretty soon? Or should we play one more tune before we do that? No? <laughs> it's perfect. We'll just... Um, Get the stuff ready to put be putting on our plate. Well, unless you want to sing it to him. No, because I've got to serve now, and okay. so we can just. I'm out of tunes. You're out of tunes. <laughs> You're out of tune. Well, tune that thing. So you want a small uh -huh. steak, right? Did you bring steak knife? You did. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna bring out the sizzle platter because it's ready. I'm gonna shut this off. That looks pretty awesome. It is. Sammy, look at that. How did yourself? It's a wonderful, it smells so good. Now I'm just going to give it a little bit of pizzazz. Huh, what am I thinking? This is the pizzazz it needs, of course. Like that, and a little bit on the, pep, on the, on the meat. I mean, what more could we ask for? And I'm gonna bring out the potatoes now. I'm gonna put a few on our plate. Here. I want to thank everybody for coming out and hanging out with, with me and Access over here. Look at that. That is a wonderful potato. And you can find me on my website. It's at www.sammyroseholandberg, and that's where you can find my recipes. And I will be very happy to answer any questions. We'll be happy to go do some parties for you. Jack, you want one of these? And sure. So please tune in again next week when we come out. Till then, love the life you live. And keep on keeping on. Here, look. I'm going to put the peppers on the plate. Like that. A little bit of mushrooms, Jack. Do you want please. it on top of your steak? Yeah, that's okay, too. Yeah. Kind of nice. You can... You can just spruce it up a little bit by doing that. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, over there to the beer. To the beer, I tell you. <laughs> I'm going to join you. I've got to get this. This is absolutely this. Actually, awesome. I'm just going to cut a little piece right now because I think we need to see. Look at this. I need you to see inside. Look at this. It's perfect. See? It's not bleeding, it's just perfect. And I'm going to take a nibble. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Nobody should eat stuff like that. Till next time. Is the beer and the CI cider chilled? Cheers. Till next time. Can we tune into Sammy's Cottage Kitchen? <laughs>